Welcome everybody, this is a quick primer on using the Ubiquiti Edge Router Lite um, quality of service features. So this router has recently become a lot more popular. It's basically the first $100 million packet per second router that you can purchase for under $100. Um, very nice hardware. The OS is currently still being developed, uh, is under active development by Ubiquiti. Uh, as of this video time, the most recent firmware is 1.4.1. Now, a lot of people are now picking these up for their home. Obviously, people that are buying these generally are a little more advanced users than you know a standard consumer who is going to go home or go to a store like Best Buy, Circuit City, and pick up you know a standard brand name router like a Linksys, Netgear. D-Link, Belkin, etc. <clears throat> These devices obviously are in a separate class. Um, however, the documentation is somewhat lacking. It's based on the Viata 6.3 core. So, you know, myself, I've, I've had a lot of experience with, you know, home networking using DDWRT and custom firmware. Um, but this device really doesn't come with much documentation at all. So, first thing I want to go over is a couple sources that I used, you know, having no experience to figure out how to use QoS. So this is going to save you guys, hopefully, a lot of time. Um, so the first item I used is, there actually is a Viata 6.3, I'm not sure if it's 6.3, but there's a Viata, yeah, it is a 6.3 QoS manual um, that I'll actually post in the link here at, in, the, in the description of the video there'll be a link to this but um, essentially this is a huge you know as you can see you know 200 plus page 250 plus page document that really explains literally what each command does so I use this to figure out how QoS works on this device and set my own QoS that is working great as of now so I'll scroll up to the top, maybe leaving the video a little bit, but I'll also put this link in the description of the video, so right here. So that is the link to the manual I used. Now QoS, for people out there, this is, this is going to be kind of novice, but QoS on the Edge Router Lite, um, you have to consider like source ports, destination ports, um, and what is considered, you know, inbound versus outbound traffic. That's the first thing that really might seem a little bit different compared to most residential routers. <coughs> so uh, most people think, well, the traffic comes in this port, it also has to leave this port. So the inbound traffic would be, or the inbound internet port or WAN port would have both inbound and outbound traffic. That's actually not the way it works. Um, you want to consider where the traffic actually leaves the router itself and comes into the router itself. There is no transition like uh, outbound or inbound between the ports. That's all in the switching fabric of the router. So <coughs> for our purposes, or for my purposes, I set up Ethernet port 1 as the WAN or Internet port, as most people are um, familiar with, and I use Ethernet 0 as the LAN or the local area network port. Um, so when you're surfing the internet or you're online and data is coming into your router to be routed, um, you need to the the transmit or the receive traffic is coming from the internet so it's RX traffic going in. In this case I set Ethernet port 1 is my internet connection and for setting up QoS rules that's considered the source port. That's where you know the source of the data is that's coming into your network. That's the source. Um, on the other side, you're going to have the transmit or TX traffic to your LAN, and that is the destination. The destination is the computer is in the LAN, so that's going to be the, considered the destination port. It's just important to keep that in mind when writing your QoS rules, and I'm going to go over my QoS rule set um, and kind of show that to you guys, show you how to load it on, on the device as well. So, that being said, um, <coughs> another thing you want to consider when writing your QoS is common ports. 
So these are some common ports that are used um, for various services. So FTP, SSH, Telnet, HTTP for web, uh, HTTPS, you know, there's 110, there's 25, you know, those are mail ports. Uh, there's a number of ports that you're also going to want to configure and set up bandwidth for um, to shape your traffic properly, which I assume most of you guys know. Um, some of you guys may be using it for gaming, so there's gaming ports, which I have set in my configuration. So let's kind of go over the syntax of the commands I used. Um, I use the shaper policy. What that does is allows you to limit bandwidth to certain ports, um, as well as assign them priority. So you know maybe you want your uh, DNS traffic to take the highest priority over things like Usenet or torrents or whatnot. Um, so let me pull up my my little configuration that I use. I can't go through each line. What it does, and keep in mind, you can find this in the manual. This is how I figured all this stuff out. But this hopefully saves people a bunch of time that you know want to um, set up their own QoS and you know do it in a quick manner, not have to spend hours reading through the manual figuring it out. So here's the QoS policies I have in place. I actually label them and, and whatnot. Um, makes it a little easier. So the first thing you have to do when you log into your router, um, which I will pull up a second window here because I already have PuTTY open and in the device. So when you log into your router uh, using PuTTY, you could use the terminal um, inside the web interface. I prefer PuTTY. Uh, it's a free utility um, that lets you log in, you know, your SSH, Telnet, etc. <coughs> allows you to copy and paste, which I'll show you in a little bit. But the first thing we need to do to actually set up the device and configure QS is we need to go into configure mode. I'm already in it, but usually this is what it'll look like. Is um, it will show you, you know, this admin or whatever your login name at the device name. I stay in my device edge router. So the first thing you need to do is type in configure. That puts the device into configuration mode. You'll know that when you see the word edit. Okay, so that tells you the device is in configuration mode. So, um, since we're using the shaper policy, um, we have to set up a couple couple items. So, what we're going to end up doing is you use set to set, delete to delete an item, or set is to you know set up or confirm uh, a new line in the policies in the router. So I'm using traffic policy because we're doing QoS. The type of policy is a shaper policy. Shaper one is this the name that I named the policy? You could name it anything. You can name it my QoS. You can name it QoS for my router. It doesn't make a difference. It's just a variable name. The thing is, when you're setting up your QoS, you want that to be consistent. I just named it shaper one. Again, you could use anything you want. Um, then we have the bandwidth command. And since this is this for the whole shaper policy, not classes or sections, what this is is actually you want to define your internet speed. Um, so what it's telling the router is how fast your internet connection is. I prefer to allocate bandwidth by percentages. So in order for the router to work using percentages, it has to know your total speed on your network connection or your internet connection. Um, generally, what's best practice is to use a number slightly lower than your actual internet connection speed because there is a little bit of overhead in internet traffic. So um, generally I prefer to use 97% of my network connection speed. Anywhere between 95 and 97% is about right. My, my, my connection speed is 60 megabits um, and I'm going to use 97% so 0 0.97 and 58 0.2 megabits, I put it at 58 megabits, basically close enough, you know, within a, a fraction of a percent. So that's why I'm using 58 megabits instead of 60 megabits when I do have a 60 megabit connection. Okay, so set traffic policy shaper default bandwidth. What this tells me is for any port that is not defined, as we're going to talk about a little bit, what this does is it puts, it accumulates all of that traffic, and this is what the guaranteed 
minimum is for that. So I'm setting aside 15% of my bandwidth minimum for this traffic. If the whole connection is loaded up, it'll split it out according to the bandwidth percentages. Um, then I have pol then the ceiling command sets a maximum amount. So say I have, you know, as mentioned, I have going to have 50 megabits of of connection speed, 58 megabits, I should say, assigned to it. So what that means is the most traffic that any of the unmatched ports can can use, and this is a, an aggregate bandwidth. This is like you know, say port 59, 59, then port 62, 42. Whatever port the traffic is is passing through, um, it's all considered one bucket for all those ports. So it limits it, it limits that traffic to. Oops, sorry. Roughly 20 megabits. So the most that traffic that isn't assigned to other ports, like port 80, if it doesn't recognize it as web traffic, etc. So whatever ports you define, if it doesn't fall in one of those categories. It, it goes into this default bucket, which is like the default if it doesn't fit anything. And the most that traffic can consume is 20 megabits. Um, and then there's priority, which say you have, you know, um, a again, like a 58 megabit connection, and you're trying to go online um, to surf the web, and you're also, someone else is trying to, you know, possibly download torrents or whatnot. You can assign different priorities to the bandwidth. Meaning your web traffic, for example, would take priority over the torrent traffic or whatnot. So the way it works is priority zero is the highest priority, and priority seven is the lowest priority. So if it was, so I'm marking my default traffic as the lowest priority traffic. Um, and then I have different sections here. Um, each one is a, is a different rule. You can kind of look at that. Um, so you have HTTP traffic, or basically web traffic, uh, you know, as noted through through here. Um, HTTP is port 80, so and that's www. So hypertext transfer web browsing. Um, so that's port 80 traffic. Obviously, port web browsing is a uh, pretty common thing, of course. Uh, it's probably how you're getting here. So what I've set up is some rules that allocate a lot of traffic or allow a lot of traffic for web browsing or web access. Um, so again, I'm setting a traffic policy. The traffic policy type is a shaper. It's in my shaper one uh, policy. And then you have class. It's like setting a, setting a rule, consider it like a rule. So it's like saying rule two or rule one. So it's, it's basically telling it as it's a rule. Um, so it's telling it to match. And this is a just a name. You could call it web. You can call it whatever. I just like using the same port as I'm going to define. Makes it nice and easy to read. So uh, I call this rule port 80 if the IP source port is port 80. And keep in mind, looking at this thing um, here. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Looking at this item here, the source port is where it's coming from. It's coming from the internet from port 80. So we're looking to match the source port of port 80. Um, at that point, I'm going to assign this class or this rule a bandwidth minimum of 20%. And a ceiling, or the most bandwidth I'll allow it, allow it to consume is 100%, which is fine because most of, you know, my personal traffic is going to be web browsing. Um, so I want to allow that traffic to go through uh, and use the, the entire pipe if necessary. Um, then you have FTP traffic. Again, it's matching the ports. I assign a very minimum amount of bandwidth and a low ceiling on this, and also a lower priority. See, it's priority three, this is priority four. So, if, you know, hypothetically, someone's trying to browse the web here, and someone's trying to download through FTP. Um, the web traffic would take priority. People actually going on the web, you know, um, doing work, loading up websites, whatnot, is going to take priority. Get this back up. 
So, that being said, um, then I have HTTPS encrypted traffic. Again, I have this set as minimum 10%. And keep in mind, this minimum is a minimum. So even if, you know, this was trying to go 90% and someone's trying to do this, it would guarantee at least 10% to port 443 or HTTPS. So they'd still be able to access that HTTPS traffic. And then I have uh, Usenet, other low-priority traffic. Um, so this is different ports that are used for downloading. Um, you know, I, I want these to be low-priority. Um, I have DNS traffic, which is important. That's web with you know um, <clears throat> resolving host names. You type in www dot whatever dot com, it's going to look that up um, and make sure that that matches and resolves that host name to an IP address, so you can go to that site. So obviously, I want that to be really high priority. I don't want anything else to take any priority over that. So I have it priority zero, and then down below I have Steam matchmaking. Um, you know, for, <coughs> excuse me, Steam matchmaking for Steam games, and that's a high priority as well. Um, so after you set up your, your QoS rules, you need to set the rule to the interface. Now the interface we're going to be applying it to is the LAN side. In my case, it's Ethernet 0, so as you see, um, in this item here, it is my LAN side is Ethernet 0. If you're using a different one, you just substitute that in. Um, so we're going to apply the traffic policy to Ethernet 0. It's an outbound traffic policy, and the policy name we're applying is Shaper 1, because that's what we named the policy. Again, whatever you want to name it. Commit, what that does is it tells the router to put the policies in effect, and then save tells the router to save the changes. Um, now the reason I like PuTTY is you can write your rules in Notepad, etc. Um, and then you can just literally paste them in and the device will the device will set those rules uh, up and put them into effect. So the device will set those rules up and put them into effect. So literally you highlight everything you want to put in, you copy it, and you go to PuTTY, and you just right click, and it sends all those things through. You're going to see the router do a whole bunch of stuff. Don't worry so much about this being invalid format. I just do it so it's easy to label, and I can save this from, for a later point in time. Um, so it's setting up the, the Steam rules there, you can see. It's setting everything up to set the interface. It's setting the commit commands. It's going to commit, and then it's going to save. So it takes a bit of time for that to happen, but we'll give it we'll give it time it needs. So hopefully this makes it a lot easier for you to configure and set up um, inbound QoS. Keep in mind this is an inbound QoS item. It is not outbound QoS, so somebody still could potentially, you know, um, saturate your outbound bandwidth without this. But for the most most people, most offices, whatnot, um, priority rules such as this are going to be effective. Obviously, you may want to change the numbers to your own different numbers, um, but at different ports, depending on different services you're running, but the principle is the same, that you set up some, some defaults based on your preferences, and then you take each port, um, and you can assign different you know, guaranteed bandwidths and maximum bandwidths to those ports and percentages, and then assign them a priority. Um, again, I'm going to put the link to the uh, manual in the description. I hope this was helpful for some people that know we're having some difficulty or we're having challenges otherwise um, I thank you guys for watching my video and hope you found it informative thanks and have a great day